A common orchid of southern Japan is the pink lady stresses, Spiranthes sinensis. This orchid is unique in that it chooses to live in human-created habitats, notably lawns or other grassy environments, sometimes being found in unexpected places. Today we'll go out to find this miniature summer flowering species around my hometown. Well, I'm in this little park here in southern Japan. Uh, it's late June. Uh, this is near my house. Yeah, this park is in no way uh, remarkable. It's typical of any park you would find in Japan. Um, as you can see, the, uh, the lawn here is not particularly well uh, maintained. And uh, in fact, this species doesn't like that kind of a high grass, so that might actually be a deterrent to finding it here this year. These plants are very short-lived, uh, you know, lasting just a handful of years, I think, uh, in the wild. Uh, they're blooming within a year or two of, of germination. So uh, let's see if we can find any up on that hill over there. It was a little bit dry earlier this spring, so it might have toasted the ones that were on top, but I think somewhere in this park we're going to find some. So let's go see what we find. Well, uh, this is the place where we should see them. Uh, they like this shorter grass. We had a dry period earlier this spring, and my suspicion is that a lot of them got fried. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, we got some here. Hold on. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so here we go. This is a nice little clump here. You can see how small the flowers are based on uh, my hand size. Um, I think that they're down here in this a little bit moister area and that's what saved them from the uh, scalding heat earlier this spring. Um, here's another interesting thing about this plant. Uh, here are the flowering stems here, and you can see here is the vegetation of this plant. Um, when these plants are going into their flowering phase, the, the vegetative stage uh, begins to diminish. Uh, the leaves elongate, and then eventually they will die after the flowers have been pollinated. They'll grow back up again in the fall. Um, this is typical of this genera, and it's also typical of uh, Gudera, the... Uh, jewel orchids, which uh, will have a beautiful leaf phase, and then just as they're beginning to flower, uh, the leaves will start to diminish in size. Yeah, so I'm really thrilled that uh, we got to see the plants today. Um, you, know, you find them every year. They're uh, very easy to find, in fact. But uh, it really is cool to have this little species literally growing in your backyard. And, um, yeah, it's a pleasure to come out every year and, and see how they're doing. Um, let's go ahead and truck on down roadways and see if we can't find some more. Uh, I think uh, some of the ditches near the uh, rice fields and the little berms should be great places to find them. So let's, let's go look up and see what we can find. I did manage to locate a few plants, but both rain and nightfall drove me back home. The next afternoon, I resumed the search up a nearby mountain, traveling up narrow concrete roads past clear cuts and through conifer plantation forests. My destination was this earthen dam, another good habitat for this plant. Well, at least here's a few of them. Um, it's really quite amazing. Uh, there are so few plants this year. It's a real testament to the dry that we had earlier on. Well, let's go ahead and take a look around, see what we find. Uh, there's plants here at least. A lot less than usual though. Not only did I find more plants, but a few animal residents as well, such as this common copper butterfly. 
And while filming, I noticed I was being watched by this fellow, a Daruma pond frog. Not far away were some wild strawberries and the remains of a snake skin. This place was indeed teeming with life. While I wanted to stay longer, work was calling me home, so it was back on the bike and down the mountain. Luckily on the way, I was rewarded with a bonus orchid species. Well, here's a little bonus plant. This is uh, Leparis um, nervosa. I was going to say uh, by tuberculata. That was the old name that uh, it was called. Instead, it is uh, a variety of that, um, of nervosa, which is a very wide-ranging species. Wow, we got a big susumibachi right by, by here. That's a dangerous bee. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, so here it is growing on the slope. A uh, very common species in uh, the forest, lowland forest around Kyushu. Uh, one of the few plants that actually prefers to live in a plantation forest, Tinoki plantation, which this happens to be. Nice find. This plant is found throughout the world's tropics and subtropics, and so may be the most widely distributed orchid species anywhere. We can also enjoy its lovely uh, seed pods from last year. So this species, uh, I believe, is self-pollinating. And if not so, then uh, it certainly does set a lot of seed. I'll check on that. Now at risk of being late to work, I sped down the mountain. But my heart remains with the plants and animals of this lovely valley.